I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and today I'll be showing you how to change out the engine oil and engine oil filter on a Suzuki RMZ450. Keeping up on preventative maintenance items such as the engine oil and engine oil filter is key to keeping your bike in great shape. Now Suzuki recommends for the RMZ450 to be changing out the engine oil and inspecting the strainers every 6 hours of operation or every 3 races and to be replacing the engine oil filter every 12 hours of operation or every 6 races to keep the bike in good operating condition. So today I'll be showing you how to do this on a 2018 Suzuki RMZ450. Now keep in mind that the process that we're going to show you here today can be followed for model years 2000. 2008 to 2018 of the RMZ 450s. To do this job, we're just going to need a few basic hand tools. You will want to have a drain pan, a funnel, contact cleaner, rubber gloves, rags, safety glasses, and for today, we'll be using the Tusk Oil Change Kit that will come with everything that we need, and you can find this on our website. To begin, start the bike and let it idle for a few minutes to get warm and then shut it off. First, we need to remove the oil fill plug. Place your drain pan underneath the engine and then remove the drain bolt from underneath the engine. Next, we're going to remove the lower left frame guard. Next, remove the stator cover lower bolt with sealing washer. All right, now this bike actually has two oil strainer screens. Now, Suzuki recommends that we are cleaning these screens out at every single oil change. Now, how often you decide to actually do that is entirely up to you, but in our experience, these oil strainer screens generally stay pretty clean. Now, most guys usually don't clean them at every single oil change. However, the service manual does recommend that we do it, so we're going to show you how. So we're going to start with this first one, oil strainer screen number one, which is right here located underneath the foot shifter. Now, inside of this oil strainer screen, we've got two clips, basically, and a magnet. We're going to remove these clips and then remove the magnet and clean everything up. Now, again, inside of the strainer, we've got two of these little clips, so we'll take our pick tool here and carefully extract them. Now in the middle of the strainer screen, we've got a magnet that we'll need to remove. And then we'll clean the strainer screen with some contact cleaner, as well as the magnet and the clips. Now once we've got these cleaned, we're going to take the magnet, place it back into the filter screen here. Then we're gonna take and insert a clip in each end. Now something to note about this oil strainer screen is on the inner diameter here, there's actually a little lip where that clip needs to be seated. So make sure that it seats inside. All right, so now that this is all clean, we can install it into the bike. All right, so now we're going to remove the old crush washer, clean up our oil strainer cap with some contact cleaner, replace the crush washer, then get it installed. And torque this fastener to 15.5 foot pounds. And that's it for oil strainer screen number one. Now the second one sits right here beneath the stator cover and to get to it, we do need to remove the foot shifter as well as the stator cover. And in doing so, you will need to replace your stator cover gasket. Now we've got OEM replacements under the OEM diagrams for your year make model of bike and we also offer aftermarket replacements. So be sure to check that out. Now before we remove the foot shifter, we do need to index it with a paint pen or a marker. Then we can remove the foot shifter. After that, we can remove the stator cover. And once you've got the cover removed, there are two dowels that you want to keep track of. All right, now as you can see, here is our oil strainer screen number two. It's on the bottom of the oil pump here, so we're going to remove these three fasteners, pull the pump, then pull the screen. Now here is the oil strainer screen. Now we will need a pair of snap ring pliers to remove a snap ring, then we can remove the screen. All right, so once you've got the snap ring removed, remove the oil screen, and then we can clean it with some contact cleaner. All right, now once you've got this clean, we can go ahead and put it back together, put the oil screen inside, then we're going to reinstall our snap ring. Now if you have damaged the screen or the snap ring, you will want to be replacing these before you install it back into the motor. Place it back into the motor, insert the three fasteners, then we're going to torque them to 8.5 foot-pounds. Now we can clean the gasket mating surfaces. 
All right, so once we've got those mating surfaces cleaned up, we can reinsert our two dowels, and then we can apply the gasket, then install the stator cover and torque the fasteners to 8.5 foot-pounds. Be careful when installing the stator cover gasket as the magnet does want to pull on the cover. Just be careful when you're installing it. When reinstalling the bottom stator cover fastener with sealing washer, be sure to replace the sealing washer with the new one. When torquing the stator cover fasteners, do so in a crisscross pattern. Reinstall the foot shifter. Before reinstalling the drain plug, be sure to clean it, then replace the crush washer with a new one, then torque it to nine foot pounds. Reinstall the frame cover and torque the fasteners to 8.5 foot pounds. All right, so next we can remove our oil filter cover with oil filter and spring. Next, we can pull out the oil filter and replace it with the new one. Before installing the new oil filter, be sure to coat the rubber O-ring with some oil. Make sure to clean the oil filter cover with some contact cleaner. Now, the service manual states that we should be replacing the O-ring on the oil filter cover. However, ours is in good shape after some inspection, so we're gonna go ahead and reuse it. Next, we can reinstall the oil filter cover spring, and then we're gonna take a little bit of oil and coat the O-ring. Then we can reinstall it onto the engine's case and torque the fasteners to 8.5 foot-pounds. When installing the oil filter cover, make sure to torque the bolts down evenly so that way we don't pinch the O-ring. Next, we can add 1.2 quarts of engine oil to the engine. Reinstall the oil fill plug, then start the engine and check for any oil leaks. All right, now the next thing to do is to check the bike's engine oil level. Now to do that, you will want to have the bike in an upright and level position. And on this stock clutch cover, you're gonna have a fastener about here in this location that you will remove. As long as oil comes out of that hole, you should be in good shape. However, if no oil comes out, you will need to add some engine oil to the motor until oil is dripping from that hole. Then you can reinstall the fastener. Now, as you can see, we have an aftermarket Henson clutch cover, which doesn't allow for us to check the engine oil's level. However, we have followed the service manual to a T, and it states that when you have changed the engine oil and the filter to add 1.2 quarts of engine oil, which we have done so, so we're pretty confident that we're sitting right at the correct engine oil level. And that's it. Keeping up on your RMZ450's oil change maintenance will definitely help you to keep your bike in good shape. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure to hit the like button, then subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how-tos, and top fives. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching, and keep the wrenches turning.